Hail friends, this is John, the minstrel behind the Lonely Mountain Band. I've created this video because I'd like to introduce you to a beautifully illustrated book by my friend Dr. Deborah A. Higgins. Anglo-Saxon Community in J.R.R. R. Tolkien's The Lord of the Rings is published by Alorus Publishing and is decorated with enchanting illustrations by Danielle Story. The cover art boasts the inspiring painting The Riders of Rohan by Ted Naismith. I'm sharing my enthusiasm for this book with you by reading a short excerpt from the book that explores the similarities between Heorot in Beowulf and Meduseld in Lord of the Rings, all set to a video of footage from the region of Rohan in Lord of the Rings Online. Stay tuned through the end of this video as I have a special way for you to get this book, an additional Beowulfian treasure from the Mythgard Institute. And now for the excerpt reading from Dr. Deborah Higgins' book. Anglo-Saxon community in J.R.R. Tolkien's The Lord of the Rings. Beowulf, in its description of Hrothgar's Heorot, stands as the one Old English poem that includes an idealized hall. The poem's audience probably had a real image already in mind, as well as a familiarity with protocol for the feasting activities that took place within the hall. Rothgar's ideal mead hall can be seen by those approaching from a distance, thus indicating the physical dominance of its position within that society. Suggestion of its elevated location within the tribal community, typically on a mound, is held in the description of Heorot as a great mead hall, where the hall towered high and wide gabled, Heorot's grandeur establishes the hall as an outstanding and noticeable structure when it is described as splendid and adorned with bone, adorned with gold, and the greatest hall building. This hall was not an ordinary building, but the craftsmen with specialized skills would have been essential in the construction of its high timbers. Craftsmen would have included both skilled carpenters and iron smiths. The material used in joining Herat's timber uprights together was described as iron. It was firm inside and outside, iron bands skillfully secured by the smith's work. And a reference made after the Grendel fight episode also refers to the iron hinges. The poet indicates the large scale of Herat when he describes it as tall and recognizable from a distance by its stately appearance and as large enough for the warriors to brace their weapons against the hall's walls. In addition, it was large enough for Hrothgar to command that eight horses with gold-plated bridles be led into the hall as a gift to Beowulf. Ground floor halls of this stature and structure are mentioned not only in Beowulf, but in later medieval works following in the Anglo-Saxon literary tradition. Thompson's research indicates that two poets accurately portray the Mead Hall as it was constructed and regarded within society. Beowulf and Gawain remain the two literary monuments to the open hall. His observation is not surprising, since Tolkien describes Sir Gawain in the Green Knight as a poem with many inner likenesses to Beowulf, deeper than the use of old alliterative meter, which is nonetheless significant. And then Tolkien placed the poem in a set of three to be studied together, alongside Beowulf and the Battle of Malden. One of the initial elements used by the Gawain poet was the ground floor mead hall. Its structure allows the entrance of a horse and a rider into the hall. Thus, the green knight rides into the hall on his horse, straight up to the dais, and challenges Arthur's court. Even though the hall is mentioned in other poems, it is the Beowulf poet who describes the hall in the most intricate detail. Not only was the scale of Hrothgar's hall impressive, but the decor and the amount of ornamentation made his hall stand out as the ideal. Goldsmiths had been employed to create grand initial impression when the hall was viewed from a distance. As Beowulf and his troops approach Heorot, they view more than just a massive cliff-like structure. It was also stately and adorned with gold they could perceive. That was the most famous hole under the heavens among earth dwellers in which the king dwelt. Its light shone over many lands. To them, the brave one in the battle, the guide pointed out the bright dwelling of the brave. As the troop marched towards this elaborate hall, their feet trod on stone paved road rather than dirt paths. 
Wealth touched every aspect of approach to the hall, verifying in the minds of the warriors the stories they had heard of its splendor. The gold must have gleamed as in a fairy tale setting as the sun hit the roof of the hall, thus earning its descriptions of shining or shimmering with gold, and splendid adorned with bone. Evidently, even the horn gables, whether carved to look like horns or actually made from horns, were overlaid in gold. This was not a place for commoners. Historically, the hall was for the wise men, those mighty ones in council, the brave warriors who protected the land, and for the queens and princesses, lords and ladies. The glittering golden roof and iron-hinged doorways opened into an elaborately furnished hall. Hrothgar's treasure-decked hall was a place for the aristocracy, as its trappings indicated. There were many a mead bench, inlaid with gold, and golden tapestries adorned the walls. Adorned with gold, tapestries gleamed along the walls, many wondrous sights for every man who gazes on such. Well, I hope you enjoyed that brief reading and video. I think this book will appeal to both scholars and fans of Tolkien. And in coordination with Alorus Publishing, I am honored to offer this book through the MinstrelSongs.com website as a special bundle package. The bundle includes the physical book, a 15% discount coupon to audit a class at the Mythgard Institute, and a 15% discount coupon for products relating to the book in the Alorus shop. And three Lonely Mountain Band songs in downloadable format. This is a very limited offer, so if you are interested, do take advantage of it very soon. The coupon for Mythgard would be perfect for the upcoming class, Beowulf through Tolkien, taught by Tom Shippey and Nelson Goering. I hope to see you in the class as I will also be attending this epic class offering. Thanks for watching and listening.